Welcome to our ultimate guide on mastering Flutter, the powerful UI toolkit by Google. Discover how to build stunning natively compiled applications for mobile, web and desktop from a single code base. Learn why Flutter is gaining serious traction and how it can elevate your development skills. Before you build those slick Flutter interfaces, you need to understand Dart. Start with the basics. Variables, data types, functions, then dive into classes, objects and error handling. Asynchronous programming is key for network requests and file operations. A solid Dart foundation will make your Flutter journey smoother. The official Dart website, dart.db, offers comprehensive documentation and tutorials. Platforms like Udemy and Coursera offer excellent Dart courses. Dart's clean syntax and null safety are standout features. Once confident with Dart, you'll be ready to tackle Flutter and build amazing things. All right, now that you've got Dart under your belt, it's time to set up your Flutter development environment. Head over to flutter.dv and download the Flutter SDK. I recommend VS Code or Android Studio. Both have excellent Flutter extensions. Install an Android or iOS emulator to test your apps. Run the Flutter Doctor command to check for issues. Start with simple Flutter apps and test them in the emulator. Flutter has a unique architecture based on widgets. Think of widgets as the building blocks of your app's UI. Everything you see in a Flutter app is a widget, from simple text elements to complex layouts. You'll need to grasp concepts like stateless versus stateful widgets and the widget lifecycle. Stateless widgets don't change their appearance once they're built. Stateful widgets can change their state over time, allowing for dynamic and interactive UIs, and are two fundamental widgets you'll use in almost every Flutter app. Sets up the overall styling and navigation of your app, while provides a basic structure with an app bar, body, and other common UI elements. To really get a feel for Flutter's architecture, try building a simple static app. A calculator or a to-do list are great starting points. Chapter 4. Working with widgets, the building blocks of Flutter. Widgets are the heart and soul of Flutter development. Lay out widgets like, and are your tools for arranging other widgets on the screen. Input widgets such as, and allow users to interact with your app. Navigation widgets like and enable you to create multi-screen apps and manage transitions between screens. State management widgets like and help you manage the state of your app's UI. Understanding how these widgets work is crucial for building responsive and interactive apps. Practice is key here. Build a multi-screen app using basic navigation and user input. The more you experiment, the more comfortable you'll become with building complex UIs. Chapter 5. State Management – Taming the Complexity As your Flutter apps grow in complexity, managing the state of your UI becomes increasingly important. Flutter offers several state management techniques, each with its own strengths and weaknesses, is the simplest approach, but it can become cumbersome for larger apps. Is a popular state management solution that's relatively easy to learn and use, builds upon the concepts of and offers even more flexibility and power. For more complex applications, Business Logic Component is a powerful architectural pattern that separates business logic from UI logic. Choosing the right state management solution depends on the specific needs of your project. To get practical experience with state management, build an app where data flows between multiple screens. Use a state management solution like or to manage the data flow and UI updates. Chapter 6. Networking and APIs connecting to the world. Most modern apps interact with external services and APIs to fetch and display data. Learning how to handle network requests and pass API responses is essential for building connected apps. You'll need to understand concepts like HTTP requests, JSON passing and asynchronous data handling. HTTP requests are the foundation of communication between your app and external servers. JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, is a common format for exchanging data between your app and a server. Asynchronous data handling is crucial because network requests can take time to complete. Darts and keywords make it easy to handle asynchronous operations gracefully. Build an app that displays data fetched from an external API, 
like a weather app. This will give you practical experience with networking and API integration. Chapter 7 Local Storage and Databases Persisting Data Many apps need to store data locally on the device. Flutter offers options from key value storage to full fledged databases. Shared Preferences stores small key value data. Skelite is a powerful relational database. Hive is a lightweight NoSQL database. Drift is an ORM for type safe SQLite interaction. Choose the right storage based on your app's needs. Build a notes app to practice local storage integration. Chapter 8 Animations and UI Design Bringing Your App to Life. Animations can significantly enhance the user experience of your Flutter app. Flutter offers a rich set of animation capabilities, from simple transitions to complex custom animations. Is the core class for creating animations in Flutter. Animations allow you to interpolate values over time, creating smooth transitions between different states. Animations create visually appealing transitions between screens, making navigation more engaging. Practice adding animations to your apps to make them visually appealing. Chapter 9. Testing ensuring quality and reliability. Writing testable code is crucial for building scalable and maintainable Flutter apps. Flutter provides a robust testing framework that allows you to write unit tests, widget tests and integration tests. Unit tests verify the functionality of individual units of code, such as functions or methods. Widget tests verify the behavior of individual widgets, ensuring that they render correctly and respond to user interactions as expected. Integration tests verify the interaction between different parts of your app, ensuring that they work together seamlessly. Practice writing tests for a simple Flutter app and ensure it's bug-free. Chapter 10, Deploying Flutter Apps, Sharing Your Creation with the World. Once you've built your amazing Flutter app, it's time to share it with the world. Deploying your app to the app stores involves several steps, including configuring app settings, generating build files, and submitting your app for review. You'll need to configure app settings like the app name, icon, permissions, and other metadata. Generating APK or Android Package Kit and IPA or iOS App Store Package Files is the next step. Deploying to the Google Play Store and Apple App Store involves submitting your app for review. Each store has its own set of guidelines and requirements. Practice publishing a simple Flutter app to both Android and iOS platforms. Chapter 11. Advanced Topics taking your skills to the next level. Once you've mastered the basics of Flutter, you can explore more advanced topics to further enhance your skills. Custom paint and canvas allow you to create custom designs and graphics. Integrating third-party packages like Firebase for back-end services, Google Maps for location services, or other specialized libraries can add powerful features to your app. Building plugins for platform-specific features allows you to access native device capabilities, such as the camera or GPS. Exploring these advanced topics will broaden your Flutter skill set and enable you to build even more complex and feature-rich applications. Outro Your Flutter Journey Begins By following this roadmap, you can progressively build your Flutter skills and be capable of developing fully functional cross-platform applications. Remember, the key to mastering any new technology is consistent practice and a willingness to learn. Don't be afraid to experiment, build things and break things along the way. Thanks for watching and happy fluttering.